how's everybody doing today? Here I am uh, in Fishers, Indiana, which is a little suburb of Indianapolis. I'm here today to visit the grave of Francis Farmer. Now, some of you may recognize the name, some of you may not. I first heard her name probably, I remember hearing about, because I re very vaguely in the 80s, I remember hearing her name because of Jessica Lange's movie, Francis, where she played Francis Farmer. But mostly is because, I, and I kind of remember that, but Nirvana did a song called Francis Farmer Will Have Her Revenge on Seattle. And that was on In Utero, their second album. So I kind of, uh, whoa, uh, that I kind of remember for these, but mostly I remember from Nirvana. Then I started reading a lot about her and became fascinated by her life story and her tragic story. And so I've always wanted to know more, so I've read more, and we're gonna go inside this chapel and find her final resting place together. Because I'm not sure where it is in here, but we'll find it. All right, let's go. It's not a huge mausoleum. Um, there's a fair amount of people at rest here, so finding Francis Farmer is not uh, happening right away. But I'm sure this is where she is. And I see her final place, resting place right here at the corner of my eye. So Frances Farmer had a very uh, interesting life. She was born in Seattle, Washington, and uh, Went to university for drama, then she signed a contract with Paramount Pictures when she went to LA. And she started to get, get kind of really well known. And she became pretty, uh, pretty famous pretty fast. A hundred of you do. <laughs> Hello, Ryan. You like working, boys? Sure. Come on, Shorty. Frances Farmer was never quite comfortable being a Hollywood star, however. She angered Paramount by refusing to change her name to something more glamorous, and she favored old clothes, not a lot of makeup, and uh, an old jalopy as personal effects. And she became associated with unpopular political causes, like migrant workers and loyalist Spain. Frances became increasingly critical of the fluffy role she was offered and candidly spoke of her disappointment to the Eastern press. The only good thing about Hollywood is the money, she said. So against the wishes of her studio and her iron world mother, Frances made a go at a stage career, joining New York's politically active group theater, scoring big as the lead in Clifford Odette's Golden Boy. But problems always seemed to be swirling around her, 
and including at that time a $75,000 lawsuit brought by a former agent. And after a couple of flops with the group, partly attributed to her washed out love affair with Odette's, Francis was in trouble. Francis became increasingly dependent on alcohol and amphetamines and was on the verge of a nervous breakdown one night in 1942 when she was stopped by the police for a minor traffic offense. You bore me, she said to the cop, and reported to use a few other harsh words. She wound up, without benefit of attorney, charged with drunken driving and given a suspended sentence. But that was only the start of her problems. She snapped on the set of a monogram melodrama titled No Escape, where she got into an argument with a hairdresser and belted her right in the face. That incident began a lengthy legal process which saw her railroaded into various mental wards, where she stayed for most of the next seven years. In a nutshell, Farmer's sister-in-law, who was present at the sentencing, decided that committing Francis to a psychiatric hospital would be preferable to imprisonment. So Francis was transferred to California's Kimball Sanitarium, where she spent nine months. Farmer's mother, Lillian, then traveled to Los Angeles, where a judge awarded her guardianship over Francis. The two returned to Seattle, but things didn't get much better for Francis. On March 24, 1944, Lillian had her daughter committed again, this time to Western State Hospital. She was released after three months, supposedly cured, but her freedom was short-lived, and her mother sent her back to the hospital in May 1945, and she was paroled briefly in 1946, but then back in the institution, Western State Hospital, for almost five more years. The stories of Francis getting a lobotomy are not true, but she did suffer a lot of abuse raped by orderlies, gnawed on by rats, and poisoned by tainted food in the hospitals. Well, Ralph, uh, in the first place, I just wanted to be able to tell something of my uh, own experiences to help people who have, I know, uh, been uh, in the same kind of predicament. I received so many letters. Uh, people who want hope or advice, even which perhaps I can suggest where they can find it. Yes. It's that sort of thing that... Uh, I wanted to do for them and for myself, I would very much like to correct some impressions which arose out of a lot of stories that were written about me, I guess, but they weren't about me. They're suggesting things that I could possibly have been doing, which I never did. I was, wasn't in a position to defend myself at the time these stories were published, and I'm very happy to be here tonight to let people see that <laughs> I am the kind of person I am and not a legend that arose. Right. Frances eventually moved to Indianapolis, continuing her stage career, and we got her own TV show, actually. But by the spring of 1970, she was diagnosed with esophageal cancer and died on August 1st, 1970. And she's interred here at Oklahoma Memorial Gardens in Fishers, Indiana. On their 1993 album, In Utero, Nirvana had a song called Frances Farmer Will Have Her Revenge on Seattle. And here's an interview with the band talking about that song. She was, you know, you know her story, don't you? She was an actress that was, um, was a, um, she was kind of a foul mouth person, What's a you know, and she, and she hated the whole um, Hollywood scene and she expressed her hatred for them publicly. And so, um, and she also, when she was like, I think she was 15, she entered this essay contest when she was living here in Seattle entitled God is Dead. And uh, a lot of people accused her of being a communist. Hmm. And then she went to New York and, and uh, was a part of this um, acting troupe. And so it supposedly had communist ties too. And uh, so then there's this big conspiracy amongst a judge, a very well-known prominent judge here in Seattle and a bunch of other people who had ties with Hollywood. And they basically just set her up and ruined her life, you know? They, um, you know, had some pictures taken of her when she was arrested for drunk driving, and um, it just, it was a big, huge scandal, and she eventually was sent to a mental institution and given a lobotomy and raped every day for years, and just totally abused and ended up, like, working at a, at a um, Four Seasons restaurant alone and dying by herself. Kurt and Courtney Love famously have a daughter named Frances Bean, but contrary to popular belief, she was not named after Frances Farmer. She's named after Frances McKee of the Vaselines, who are a Scottish punk band from the early 90s. There's Frances Bean today. So Kurt may have got a little wrong there. She did not have the lobotomy. That was just a rumor. But Hollywood did make a movie about Frances in 1982 called Frances, starring Jessica Lange. And of course, they got the facts wrong. Here's a bit of the trailer. I learned your lesson very well. 
do what you think is right? Everybody else be damned? You had better wise up. This is gonna be out of my hands. It isn't in your hands, Mama. And because she dared to be different, they attacked her. You've got no right! Well, you no longer have any rights as an adult. But she wouldn't back down. What did you do? You know, I've never been able to figure that out. Miss Farmer, you leave me no choice but to order you to start serving 180 days at the county jail. I haven't got a lawyer. What I want to know is if I got any civil rights! Have I got any civil rights? Francis is riveting. Jessica Lang, in an outstanding performance, is touching, harrowing, and finally heartbreaking. Jessica Lang. Francis. Well, may Francis Farmer rest in peace. And yeah, that's what I know about the life of Francis Farmer. So I'm gonna say rest in peace to her and to you and yours. Love you. Peace.